Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let me show you how to save colors in the Mac Color Picker. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. Now while you're using your Mac occasionally you need to choose a color for some text or for some graphics or something. For instance, here in Text Edit and I choose some text and I want to make it a color, I can click here and then I can choose one of the colors here shown as a color chip. But I could also click Show Colors and then I get this interface here. This is called the Color Picker. If I go to Pages and do the same thing and click the little Color Wheel icon there which usually is used to show that you're going to go to the Color Picker you get the same exact Color Picker. In the Mail app it's the same thing. If I want to change the color Notice I've got that Show Colors button and now I've got the same color picker. Even in third party apps like Pixelmator Pro you can choose the color several ways and usually one of those ways is to choose the color picker. Notice the little button here and it brings it up. Now since the color picker works on different apps on your Mac but it's part of the system this means you could save colors in one app and use them anywhere. For, so for instance let's use the color picker here to change the color of this. So I can choose any one of these modes for the color picker. Let's just use the circle. I'll go from darkest all the way to lightest here so now I can choose a color. and Let's choose like a red like that. Now let's say I like that red. I could save that really easily using these chips below. I've got this big chip here to the left showing me the current color selected. And over here I have these small chips where I can save these two. To save one all I need to do is drag and drop like that. But now you can see I've saved it here to this first position. Now if I switch over to Pages with this text selected I can bring up the Color Picker and notice the chips are still there. I've got that saved color and if I want to select it all I need to do is click it and notice here the color is set to that. So I can set a variety of different colors in here. Let's choose a new one like that and I'll drag and drop it over. And I can put it before or after that chip. This is a linear list so you can't position it somewhere later on. It's just one after the other. So since I have one there I can put it before or after that first one. If I choose another color I can drag that over and place it in any position there but only in those first three spots. I can't just stick it out here by itself. So now in Mail here if I want to color some text I can click here, click Show Colors and I have those selections right there. And I can click any one of those to choose it. And likewise I could add a color here. Let's make this a darker blue. I'll drag this over and I will drag a chip right here. Or let's group it with that other bluish color there. Notice I can drag them around to rearrange them any way I want. Now here I am in that third party app Pixelmator Pro. Let's create a shape here and let's say I want to go and change the color. I can click right here and then click the Color Picker icon. And now I get this interface and I can choose a new color or I can choose one of these that I've saved. And I could easily add another one. Let's go and use a different color picker panel. Let's say let's use this one and I could pick one of these colors here and then I could take that color and drag that here as well. Now all the way back in Text Edit you could see the colors have updated and I could choose whichever one I want to change the color of the selected item. Now in addition to rearranging these I could also remove them. Removing them can be tricky though. There are basically two ways to remove a color. The first one is that you select it and then press the Delete key on your keyboard. But notice something. I can't select the color. Oh, I can click it and then it uses that color. It even shows it here. But you don't see a selection box around the color. I think this is a bug that's currently in Mac OS but it's been around for a while. One of the ways I found that you can force a selection to appear is if you click and drag and kind of wait. And if you wait long enough you'll see a selection appear around that color. You can see how that one's highlighted. Sometimes it doesn't appear but the next time then you click on a color chip the selection does appear. So you kind of got to trick it to get in there. Once you have something definitely selected you can press the Delete key and it will delete that color. Now if you don't want to try to figure out how to get something selected there's another way to do it. You can click and drag, believe it or not, to the trash in the dock. And doing so will delete it. Even though it doesn't seem like this panel 
should be in any way connected to the trash can in the dock. Now there are other ways to get colors to add here besides moving around in the color wheel or using one of these various different color picker panels. For instance you can click here and then you get an eyedropper tool and you can move it anywhere you want. Let's grab a purple from the desktop background and you can see how it changes to purple. And Now I can drag that purple over. Also if you're here inside of the color sliders and you choose RBG sliders this is where you can actually enter the hex values that web developers are so familiar with. So just change it to something here and then you can see how it sets all the sliders properly. You get the color there and now you can add that in. So you can get a precise color that way. Now this technique can come in handy sometimes when you just want to use the same color in two different places. Like say you're composing a document and you want to create a graphic that goes along with that document. You can use that color to color text in in the Pages document but you can also use that same exact color to create shapes in a drawing app and then when you import that shape into Pages the colors match. Other times if you do a lot of graphic design you simply want to use the same colors over and over again in a variety of different apps. It could be, for instance, the colors that go with the logo of your company. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.